Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Sugar from Sound Candy Studio and today I'm going to do a very quick video on gain staging and the importance of metering. See you in a moment. Okay, welcome back. Right, so uh, as I said at the top, this is about gain staging and proper VU metering and checking your, your, your levels. So I'm going to pull up any, so I'm here in this uh, boom back drum uh, volume one, and I'm just going to grab any sample and drop it onto the timeline, like so. So let's just take a lis listen to it quickly. A uh, simple loop looks okay. Uh, if you take a look at, let's just close this for a second. If you take a look at the uh, levels here and here, let's just have a quick look. Everything looks fine. Uh, but, however, uh, what I try to get the guys who come into the studio here to do is not just look at the levels because it sounds okay when you're monitoring, it sounds okay in the headphones, it sounds okay on the speakers. However, if we were to take a deeper look, let's just grab this one. So this is the Waves uh, VU meter. And let's just take a listen to the track. And let's just have a look at the meter. Let's just put that there, just have a look at it. See anything, see any problems? Yeah, this one's slamming into the red. Uh, so um, gonna be a problem. Okay, so there are a couple of fixes for that. We could just go up to our track and gain stage by bringing down the volume. And if you take a look, you can see it's at negative 10.2 decibels, but let's just put it back where it was. Okay, so how do we manage this situation? Because clearly it's gonna be obvious, it's beyond the headroom, so that's not gonna be good. Uh, there's a nice little plugin that I often use to solve this problem, and it's this one here. It's the Hornet. It's the Hornet uh, VU meter Mark III. Really, really inexpensive plugin, and I love using it. And I'm going to show you why. So, okay, we've put these two plugins into the chain, so I just want to show you why they're there. So, here's your Hornet, and there's your VU. So if we do, what we want to do is we want to get our drum loop into something manageable. Now, before we have compressors, uh, EQ, anything like that, uh, what we want to be able to do is to manage this level of this uh, drum loop so that it doesn't peak. We obviously don't want to go too much above or we don't want to go at all above zero dB because we don't want to distort our track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the track again and I'm going to show you how this plugin works. It's, it's, it's self-explanatory, there's not much to it. You have an also button you have a button that follows your beat and looks at the decibels that it's going to be producing and you have a reference marker. Now by default, I set the reference marks to minus 18 dB. So we're well below the, the thresholds of, of, of distortion on this track. <clears throat> uh, so let's have a look and let's go forward. Let's just play this for a second. So clearly, as we saw before, this thing is slamming into the red. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the auto button. And what the auto button is going to do, it's going to read this track as it's being played live. And what, see what it's going to do now. Can you see that? Massive reduction. So what have we done? We are now hitting minus 13 dB in our reference of minus 18 dB. So clearly this thing is working. We, yes, we can just simply go in, as I said, and pull this down and manage it that way. But what we, putting this on the track allows us to do a couple of things. So if we go to EQ and we add some EQ or we add a compressor or a limiter, we've still got this in our, in our, in our um, sends and returns. So that means we can constantly monitor this, this drum loop and ensure that it's way below the desired threshold. We can also put that, this soft, we can also put this plugin into our master bus so that we are way below. And this is important when you're sending your stuff off to get mastered. So it's really important to keep your, your, your um, fidelity of your track at a reasonable level so that we don't keep slamming into the red and distorting the track because 
it's a digital domain and it's going to sound rubbish anyway. So if you keep slamming into the red, it's going to sound rubbish, it's going to sound distorted. And as soon as you send it to a mastering house, they're going to say, wow, this is way off. So this plugin, I think it's about 2.5 euros, which is really, really cheap. And this is at the time of doing this video, um, Tuesday, the 4th of September, 2018. So it's really, really cheap. I think before that it was something like five euros. So it's really, really inexpensive. And yes, I know you can go in and pull this down here, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to manage the output gain. And the reason why we're doing that is because on the uh, fader in Studio One, uh, often, and you can see this, let's just, let's just turn these uh, off and let's just see why we want to make sure that this fader isn't fooling us. So if we pull this all the way down and we play this and we play our and we play our track, we can still see that we're, sorry, let's do this again. This fader makes no difference. So if we put this on, if we put this on and pull the fader down, we're still slamming into the red. So this fader is not giving us a true reading of the output of this particular loop, which is why we often um, don't look at this fader. This fader is only in relative to the output from your, your monitors. So that's all you're going to get from here, but you can still see the fidelity of this particular um, sample is way in the red and it needs to be managed, which is why we put this plugin on there. So that will manage it and keep it way below the threshold that you need to build a successful and fidelity rich track. So that's that. Uh, just going through this, uh, this color here represents the, the peak colors. Uh, this is looking at your the constant threshold of this track. So if it changes, we can manage that by uh, saying this is desired level, but this is the reference point. Uh, we have gain, so it can increase and decrease as this goes on, and you also have the meter button. The also button, if you keep this on, as the track changes, so if we make a change in the drum loop, this will look at it and manage it. It will say, okay, we're not going, trying to go above uh, 18 dB, and this is the output that we're con constantly running at so as the track plays this monitors it it's look it does a look ahead and it looks at the output and says okay this is where we currently are and this is our target level and that's essentially all it does it's it's not um uh, it's not wildly exciting but it's an interesting tool to have in your toolbox the other one let's just go back to my plugins and if i zoom all the way down to here this is another plugin that i constantly use as well and if we just go through this one, let's just go to sort of basic, uh, basic track in. We put it here, and let's have a look. Let's just put that, move that across. So this is another one. I will do a separate video on this particular VU meeting and why this is sometimes very, very useful uh, beyond and above both the Waves uh, VU and well, just above the waves for you, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, um, this is the Hornet VU Meter Mark III. Uh, it's a really, really good plugin. I will leave uh, the description of where you can go and take a look at this and read some more about it in the description. So if you like, uh, so please subscribe, uh, comment. Um, if there are any vid videos that you'd like me to do, any of the plugins, I have a ton of plugins. So I will make my way through going through some of these plugins, but I do have a huge amount of them. Some really useful, some not as useful. You know what it's like, you buy a bunch of plugins, you try them out, you don't like them, it's too late, well, you've already bought them. Uh, so that's generally my thing, but certainly I will do lots more videos on these plugins, the ones that I use often in my music. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, take care, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.